Did Brigham Young teach that Adam was God, or is it just a theory, or is it doctrine? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. Last time we met Mary Gavin, and this time we have the pleasure of meeting her husband, Randy. Uh, and just a fascinating story, and anything you care to re reflect on Mary's uh, story? Anything you heard that you wanted to clarify? Um. Oh, well, well, maybe we get into it as we go along. She, she was amazingly short-winded. It's a yeah. It's a, she did a great job. I, and I, I love our story and I uh, love to hear her talk yeah. about it. I appreciate. it. Now your story's a little different. She grew up Methodist, but you actually grew up LDS, right? I, I was born in the LDS Church uh, and raised in it. Yeah. Where uh, was this at? Mesa, Arizona. Okay. And so, f parents active and your. Parents, and were, parents were active in the uh, church. How many uh, brothers and sisters did you have? There was six in our family. I was uh, I was one of the six. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, and just kind of normal Mormon stuff, I guess. And knew the church was true. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> went to so. primary and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did the did the primary? Uh, got uh, started in the scouting. Uh, yeah. Eleven years old as a, I think it was called guide scout. Yeah, they, that time. yeah, I think so. And they led us into the regular program and yeah. went uh, went on my way to Eagle Scout. Uh, got your eagle, huh? Good for got you. Got my eagle and, um, and then became the Explorer Scout and yeah. enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the church. Yeah. I, had, I had fun being a Mormon. Yeah. And it was really all we knew, right? I mean, it's all you knew, I guess, yeah. and just the culture and all the... That's you know, right. Any questions come up in your youth that you... Challenged? I guess you took seminary, probably. Any questions ever come up? Well, um, not really. Uh, I was, uh, I think I was very s stubborn. Uh, like my seminary teacher one year, uh, Leon Grover, wanted to show everyone how serious peer pressure was. So I was usually late to seminary because I had a uh, PE class right before uh. before it. And so he set it up so that he was going to ask a question that was that I could answer, <laughs> and then the rest of the class was supposed to, you know, be jumping out of their seats, raising their hands to say, "No, I got the right answer." And mm -hmm. I was supposed, and then he began questioning me, "Are you sure? Do you want to think about that? Do you want to change your mind?" And uh, I didn't change. <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh, I was stubborn in my my yeah. beliefs. I. Uh, talked to uh, people and I invited uh, people to church, you know, tried mm. to be a missionary. Back then it was, uh, what do you know about the Mormons? Would you like to know more? Yeah, so, golden question. So we didn't yeah. shun the name Mormon no. uh, back in those oh, days. No, not at all. Um, so you just had, you had to feel like you had a good testimony of the church and yeah, it yeah, was had, true had, and all? Uh, had no doubts. I didn't know... Uh, I didn't know of anything that would yeah. cause me to doubt at those times. Now, I'm, I overheard you mention that you got a patriarchal blessing rather early in life. I uh, did. Normally we wait till what, 16 or so, but what was your story? Well, it was uh, Bishop Willis in the 12th Ward out in Mesa, and, and uh, our, our patriarch uh, was uh, going to be giving my sister, two years older than me, a patriarchal blessing and <clears throat> I guess I thought well I'm just as good as her <laughs> and I, uh, I actually I would say pestered the bishop until he consented and yeah. and uh, gave me a recommend sent me to and allowed you to get your patriarch yeah. now the curious thing is that she's only 11 right or right. so and you're only nine yeah it's just really interesting did that mean quite a bit to you I guess that being a did you understand it and what? It was well, I felt all part of the part of what was going on. Yeah, I guess. yeah. Interesting how we fall into that uh, mentality yeah. and that thinking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, the and of course it was interesting to a kid my age. The the lost tribes. I was going to be <laughs> instrumental in teaching the Were lost you? tribes. Oh, yeah. lucky you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you end up going on a mission. 
I um, did. Where'd you go? Upstate New York, uh, called the Kimura Mission at the time. Okay. And was that involved in the Kimura pageant at all? Yes. Did you do that? Yes, we did. Both uh, both years I was out there, we did the... The full-time missionaries participated. Yeah, there was about 200 and some of us uh, full-time missionaries that came in from all quarters of the state. Wow. And uh, and then about uh, five or 600 uh, typically girls from BYU... Uh, that would come out. And... ...came. And this is a long preparation and a long production period, isn't it? Isn't it a month um, or two worth of... You know what? I don't really remember, but it seems like it was only a couple of weeks of oh, really? uh, the, Harold. That I you had. were involved in. Huh? Yeah, the the director, uh, drama professor from BYU, Harold I. Hansen, really had things down to a science by then. Okay. And so he could uh, put it all together. And were you doing missionary work during that time, or just out in the we were people the, visiting, or we were teaching. Uh, uh, we were each assigned a group of maybe. 13 or 14 uh, yeah. girls yeah. from BYU to teach uh, basic uh, concepts. Like our mission was a little different than I've heard uh, from anybody else, but we had 62 doctrinal approaches uh, to the Book of Mormon that we would teach um, be before we ever got to the six lessons. To members or non-members? Non-members. Oh. So we were teaching some of those two, uh, our little study groups, during the two weeks of pageant preparation. Oh, okay. Uh, so we were getting used to being, like I was uh, Abinadi, uh, <laughs> or not Abinadi, I was one of the wicked priests in King Noah's court for Abinadi's we scene. Watch Benedite, yeah. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> the preparation for that really was uh, just learning how to sit there while they Put your stuff on, you know, your yeah. beard and and uh, whatever. I don't well, even know if we had uh, used makeup because you're quite so a ways far away. away yeah. Well, that's fascinating. But we did hear from Mary that your last place that you worked was over in her area, that's Corning. Right. That's right. That was. Uh, what did you think of, of Mary when you? What, well, what I thought it? she was quite a pretty little gal. Yeah. Um, I was always uh, uh, pretty much kept my mind, you know. Uh, they, they used to call me, uh, what was it, uh, Elder Letter of the Law or something like oh, that. Yeah. yeah, they had had a name for me. My partner um, really did like Mary. <laughs> yeah, I, they kind of got and, that idea. Yeah, so yeah. I had to keep him <laughs> reined over on uh, other uh, projects in the Corning area. Yeah. But... Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was yeah. just. Uh, then you, you go family. home back to Mesa, back yeah. to Arizona. Yeah. And then how do you connect back with Mary? Well, I had invited uh, numerous people to, you know, if you're ever in Arizona, come, come and you come got, by a, you and got see a place me. to stay. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that, the, uh, that Mary's family didn't really have a concept of what Western states were, how big they were. That's kind of what I was questioning when she was talking about how she was coming to Utah yeah. State through Arizona. Yeah. I kept kind of got lost in that little path. But right. Yeah. We, that's yeah, what you, their trip was down there at first to see you, and then up to Utah State, uh, up yeah. to Logan. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's how that worked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it was fun seeing her, and things clicked. It, I guess. it was, and we were able to chat about things, and I realized that we had a lot of a lot of things in common uh, spiritually. I'd already been home for uh, a few months, and and. Uh, had dated a little bit, but didn't find any girls interesting. But uh, <laughs> Mary suddenly interested me, and and uh, but I wanted to be fair about it, so I invited one of the, one of my companions down to see the Stanton family and and uh, see Mary. But um, <clears throat> but then I then this thing this feeling came over me of uh, territorialness, and, <laughs> and uh, so I uh, devised a way to to. Uh, Go off with her and and uh, her brothers and uh, <coughs> leave this leave this poor uh, former missionary companion with the other folks. But um, so it didn't take you long though to <coughs> eventually. Well, it was it was uh, <coughs> her father. Uh, I, I drove uh, led led them out to the freeway so they could you know be pointed in the right direction to take her up to Logan. And uh, her father came back. We, he pulled over, and he came back to my car, and 
And he said, you know, she's not going to last long. You better go stake your claim. <laughs> <laughs> he could tell you were interested, though, right? He could tell. Yeah. And uh, so that kind of stuck with me. And I made, uh, with with a friend, I dropped him off at BYU, and, and I'd head on up to Logan. And we did that uh, four or five times, and, and then we got married. Uh, in the Mesa Temple? In the Mesa Temple. Yeah. And... Uh, from then, uh, you end up with five children, she was mentioning, and yeah. you're just active in the church, and things were going along well. And yeah. yeah. You did have an experience, though, on your mission that you wanted, uh, that I, I wanted you to share. Um, you were out walking with a companion one day. And yeah. yeah, I did. There were, there were some seeds planted of, of uh, inquiry, I would say, <laughs> um, which is interesting because I, I, uh, when I gave my farewell talk, I misquoted a scripture, which I'd like to correct now. <laughs> <laughs> a few years later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had, I had said that because of inquiry, the uh, uh, hearts of many shall be turned. And uh, it, the word was iniquity, oh, not inquiry. Not inquiry. Inquiry is not bad. <laughs> The Lord gave us brains uh, to inquire, to inquire. With and uh, expects us to use them. Yeah. Now you found find a little uh, folded sheet though on your mission as yeah. you're walking with your companion. What did that do for you? Well, <clears throat> it, uh, it it that pamphlet really didn't do anything except plant a seed. Uh, I decided that it, well there was this pamphlet blew across the road and and uh, I simply picked it up just because it was out of place. It was, yeah. didn't belong there. It was a beautiful pine uh, grove uh, development. And um, so I, I picked it up and my companion, I, I saw that it was targeted uh, at us. And so my partner, uh, I showed it to him and he said, oh, that's apostate, throw it away. Anti-Mormon, something or other. Yeah, well, apostate. He he, sent, he used oh. the word apostate. That's yeah. apostate. Throw it, you know, throw it away. Well, I tucked it in my uh, pocket with the idea of throwing it away. You know, when I got to, back to the apartment, and uh, the way events turned turned out, uh, Larry, because of uh, things that he believed about his patriarchal blessing, he wasn't concerned to go um, home. Where his father was quite ill. And, this was your companion. My companion. Yeah. So anyway, but his father did pass away, and uh, Larry uh, did go home, and so I was without a partner for uh, probably a week and a half or two, and so I used the members of the church to go out and and uh, keep the appointments. Oh, yeah. So I was at the Scotia Stake Center um, near Schenectady. One Saturday morning, waiting for a member to show up, and Brother Woods, our, our custodian there, and he was our barber too, a real nice fellow. I uh, sitting on the couch in the foyer waiting, and there was that paper in my pocket. <laughs> so I pulled it out, and I, oh yeah. And I remembered that he had quoted something called the Journal of Discourses. So I uh, <clears throat> asked Brother Woods, what's the Journal of Discourses? <laughs> and he pointed behind me, and I says, oh, it's a glass case, it's locked. Mm. He threw me the key, and I looked up the references. And the fellow that had written this, asking the question, did you know that Brigham Young taught that Adam was God? Well, he had quoted directly and correctly from... His Journal of Discourses. The Journal Brigham of Discourses. Young, yeah. And at the time, I do remember thinking, <laughs> whoa, I can't follow any kind of inquiry like this because what would my parents think? How would this affect my ward? You know? right. So I figured it was 1800s flowery language that I either couldn't understand or maybe at some future time I would understand yeah. what it was about. So I put it away. And then uh, went on with my life. You hmm. know, just forgot about it. Yeah. So... Ten years okay. later, yeah, it came back. <laughs> now you're active all this time, I guess, yeah. in the church oh, yeah. and doing your thing and yeah. going to the temple, are you? And oh, yeah. just doing the whole 
business. Yeah. You're actually a, you become a stake mission leader. Is that right? Well, before that, uh, my wife and I, uh, as as a member of the Elders Corn Presidency, we were given the charge to uh, take ten couples in our ward and prepare them to go to the temple okay. to have temple marriages, temple prep and, class, or something. Yeah. And, yeah. and we actually formed quite the fun and nice bonds with uh, with, with this group and uh, and grew to really care about them but uh, <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> after we did that then uh, I guess we uh, moved up to an area where uh, I was going to make my fortune building homes. Yeah, and uh, that's when I became a mission leader, ward ward mission leader, seventy. Yeah, and then uh, and then by the time that we moved up here to Salt Lake, uh, things uh, you know more things happened in our lives, and and I eventually became the stake mission president, uh, which was simply the senior seventies president in the stake. Yeah. Um, but they call it the stake mission president. Right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, a friend of mine who listened to the radio uh, all the time, a radio station I'd never heard of, I didn't know there was such a thing as Christian radio, um, he told me that there was a man troubling the church, uh, offering $1,000 to anyone who could prove that Brigham Young didn't teach that Adam was God. <laughs> didn't and, teach. Uh, did didn't it? teach. Yeah. And so I said, "Oh, I've had experience with this. You know, yeah. Let's take this guy's money and shut him up." <laughs> so we began on that, and just within a couple of days, my my friend was out. I'm not doing this. I'm not going any further because he actually owned a set of journal of discourses. Mm -hmm. And began looking it up, and he didn't want to. He didn't want to go any further. Yeah, right? he didn't want to trouble his testimony. But you kept inquiring. <laughs> well, my my job was to go to the church and talk to the you yeah. know the, the people that would know the historians. Yeah. And uh, that uh, that led me to uh, the Salt Lake City Library, where they kept old copies of the uh, Deseret News. Mm -hmm. And uh, and sure enough. That Brigham Young did say those things, <laughs> that God the Father, and and if you can if you can uh, somehow twist that he mean meant something else other than God the Father, yeah, then good luck. <laughs> uh, so this kind of got you really thinking. Was there anything else that kind of came along that challenged you a little bit? Um, well, I I had on my mission heard a bishop and a elders quorum uh, member. Basically, telling uh, the bishop, telling the fellow that you've got to stop talking about the uh, blacks and the priesthood. You know, it's too controversial. Oh. It's got to stop. And what uh, year was this? This would be in uh, 1969 or 70. Okay, before it was, it was within my first before 78. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, back in those days, at the outlying areas, they allowed uh, members of the church to sell uh, Deseret books uh, in the cultural hall on Sunday in between services. Oh. So I purchased some of those books that dealt with that issue and um, didn't really receive uh, much in the way of light or information from it. <laughs> uh, David O. McKay seemed to think it was simply a policy. Yeah. Um, but others were quite adamant about it. Brigham Young was really adamant about it, right. that uh, all the sons of Abel received the priesthood before uh, any sons of the blacks. Of Cain, yeah. I was going to ask you real quickly, unless you're not finished with nope. that story, but you had ran, ran into a situation with Marion D. Hanks I was curious about. What, oh, yeah. what do you remember about that? Well, um, on, on my, my mission, uh, because of the heavy uh, memorization of Book of Mormon scriptures, um, I felt that I, my testimony wasn't good enough. And so I was striving for a greater testimony. And uh, I began praying for a sign. 
and the uh, I had an experience that, that reminded me somewhat of Joseph Smith's experience in the in the grove of trees, right. and it scared me, and I quit praying for a time, and uh, so then uh, <clears throat> we got a new mission president in the interim. Yeah. Reed Bankhead, a BYU hist uh, Book of Mormon professor, went home, and Bob Stevenson, uh, Salt Lake City, came out. And Bob says, we got to do what, more what we have in common with the people. Start reading the New Testament. So that's what I did. And I read that a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. <laughs> and I was convicted that I was a wicked person. Mm -hmm. It just overwhelmingly, I was convicted that I was a wicked person. And uh, I began praying again and asking God the remedy for that sin. And that is when I received uh, a real testimony of Jesus Christ. Was it? Yes. And I went out every day as a Mormon missionary with joy in my heart, bearing testimony of Jesus Christ, pestering my companion um, with questions about how do you get born again? How's that, how's that work? <laughs> and uh, he, he told me, well, it'll happen a lot, <laughs> you know. But eventually you run into Marion D. Hanks. Okay, well. We're uh, actually running out of time, because, unfortunately. Oh, so. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, well, because of, of uh, testifying of Jesus Christ, I found that a year into my mission, I still had not baptized anybody. But I was working hard. There was there really wasn't any other thing. But Marion D. Hanks came out and interviewed all the missionaries, and he got me in there, and and uh, he said, "Elder, you're proud." And of course, I so okay, I'm ready to listen. And then uh, then he started telling me that, uh, "What do you testify of?" I see you haven't baptized, and I said, "Well, I testify of Jesus Christ." And he says, "Well, this is the gospel, of the restoration. You need to testify of Joseph Smith." He raised his hand up to the square, and he says, "And I promise you." In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that if you will testify of Joseph Smith, you'll come to know Joseph Smith is a prophet. <laughs> and, well, uh, and all I had said is that I don't know about Joseph like I do Jesus. That's all what I had said. Yeah. So. Well, when you, what was your transition then? You kind of have these seeds that have been planted to you. What kind of brought you into the moment, I guess, when you're telling Mary, well, I'm not sure the church is true. What, what was that about? Well, I never... I never said, I'm not sure the church is true. What I said, the moment that I chose to actually tell her the turmoil that I was going through was that I said, we've been lied to. Oh. And that was because of Bruce McConkie's letter, uh, a nine page letter that he had uh, written to Eugene England at BYU telling him, yes, Brigham Young did teach that Adam was God and all the other things the cultists ascribed him, but wow. you <clears throat> better not talk about it anymore because I can't defend your membership uh, before the Brethren any longer. Bruce R. McConkie wrote that? Yes, he did. Oh, boy. And on uh, nine, all nine pages, it's stamped, do not reproduce. But uh, some somebody, somebody in the... Somebody <laughs> reproduced it. <laughs> yeah, and I have a copy of a copy of a copy. So at this point, you're thinking maybe the church isn't true or that there's, you've been lied to, but did, yeah. did that bring you... To, did you have a sense that Jesus was there? for you, or was that another step? Well, um, I suppose, uh, you know, continuous with this is, uh, think, you know, things that happened. That, that's why I tell people what you do matters. You know, every, everything matters. You can count. And Marion D. Hanks also said this, I, or I heard this from him, whether it was original with him, but you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in a seed. And that, that has stayed with me through it all, that uh, really what you do really Matters. does matter. God yeah. is at work. He is reaching out to each and every one of us all yeah. the time throughout our entire lives. I'm just convinced of it. Yeah. Well, how did you find Jesus then? Well, um, or at least what we'd say the biblical Jesus. <laughs> the biblical Jesus, uh, because I read in the New Testament uh, during this time, I read that he loved us first. And this broke my heart because I was still striving to be worthy <laughs> of his love, uh, not, not realizing 
the finished work. Just being a faithful Mormon, right? That's and right. Working your way to heaven. Yeah. yeah. Had you understood grace at all? Uh, grace, I never felt comfor comfortable calling uh, people gracers, but uh, <laughs> I, we, I certainly was part of the group that did that. Uh, the, uh, our elders, our mission, we called them gracers. We didn't have any idea, any clue about what grace uh, was or yeah. what it, its, uh, its impact. That's really been good news though, hasn't it for you? That's the good news. Yeah. That, that is the good news. Uh, the, the Mormon gospel, really, if you think about it, it's not good news. It's, uh, no, it's a works-based religion and you have to do you have to do in order. And it's not about Jesus' righteousness, it's about our righteousness, yeah, right? Yeah, and you don't find out if your righteousness was enough yeah. until... Or you're always questioning that. And, yeah. yeah. So have you enjoyed that? And I guess it's been a while now. You, you actually yeah. pioneered. Uh, you felt yeah. alone when you were coming out. This was back in the 80s or something, wasn't it? Back or, in the uh, 80s, I thought Sandra Tanner was evil incarnate. <laughs> Now I know uh, that God raised up this uh, the truth and this couple to tell the truth. Yeah. Any advice to, to Mormons who might be seeking? Well, just think about your own, your own children. Would you tell them to bury their head in the sand and not inquire? Uh, Good point. I don't think so. I think you, you want your children to be founded on the rock. And uh, the only rock they're, they're going to find uh, in this life or the life to come is the rock of Christ. Yeah. And that is it. And it brings such joy. I mean, it's such good news to to have that confidence that Jesus is, yeah. is there with us or has taken care of our sins and, yeah. and that we can approach God clean, as clean as we sinners can be because of what Jesus did and His righteousness. Yeah, yeah that's right. Has, has that been hard for you to make that transition back when you did? I know you were alone, but... It, it always pokes its head up. Yeah. Um, the idea of, oh, well, <laughs> you know, uh, when, I, when I get uh, squared away again, you know, then, you then know, I'll, I'll feel closer to God. Yeah. Uh, that always pokes its head up, but the, the truth is that uh, God is good all the time. Yeah. It's... Uh, He's, He's faithful. Bible yeah. means a little bit differently to you now? The Bible is amazing. Um, I, I pin my confidence in the Bible back when I was 17 and I saw the Six Day War in Israel. Uh. Uh, we watch it in the morning before we went to work and, <laughs> and uh, in the evening when we came home. Uh, and that was, that was my first thing when I, wow, there's something to this uh, yeah. Israel. Yeah. So, so God's been kind of touching your heart all the way along. Eh? He has, and He's given me, uh, given me the, uh, I would say, evidence uh, yeah. to, to look at the Bible and realize that it's real. It's, yeah. it's not somebody's fantasy. It's real. It's, if it wasn't real, it would look way different. It would. Uh, yeah. And Mary coming along with you. I mean, that that must have been a joy that. She was willing to look and study and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, come yeah. to faith. There was a point when I thought we were done because she want, she married a Mormon man and she wanted a Mormon <laughs> father for her children. Well, and a celestial marriage and all that yeah. stuff and doing the right thing. And yeah, that was, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it was a close call. God knew all the time what was going to happen, but sure. uh, he didn't tell but us. But you were a little, <laughs> little concerned there for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was too. That was a big moment. Any last minute thoughts, Randy? Uh, appreciate you so much sharing your story and you've had some fascinating experiences for sure. Yeah, well, just that uh, again, it's uh, not having, see, Jesus says we have not received the uh, uh, spirit of fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and that's that's probably the the biggest thing. There, there's there is no fear. Um, I feel so sad when I talk to Mormons and they come to a point where they feel they have to stop and protect their testimony, yeah. and uh, and I just can't picture having to live that way yeah. uh, again. I just again because yeah. we know we did. Didn't we, we did. Yeah. We did. It's uh, 
And that's good news. That's it's, really good that's news. That's the good news. Yeah. Well, thanks, Randy. I appreciate you taking your time. And, Thank you, Earl. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.